my least favorite player I've ever covered. Yeah. Eric Armstead. I felt Eric Armstead was... had a chip on his shoulder the whole time. Since the moment he was drafted. At no point was he happy to talk to anyone in the media. When he did talk to the media, I felt he was essentially filibustering. He would have the longest group interviews and say the least, somehow. But that's not why I didn't like him. Armstead is like, fine, dude. I had no issue with Armstead until it was time for him to get his extension like five years ago. Four years ago. And I wrote on Twitter that I didn't think they should give him an extension. I thought they, I said they should sign Clowney instead. Maybe not sign Clowney, but I, I wrote that. And he like quote tweeted it and really, really upset him. And I forget exactly what he said, but ever since that day, like once a year out of nowhere, he would just take shots at me on Twitter about nothing or about something else. But it was all because I wrote one time on Twitter that the Niners shouldn't extend his contract. He flipped out about that. And never, ever, 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 ever let it go. I thought that was petty. Um, to the point where like, he's the pettiest player I've ever covered. He's the only player ever who wouldn't answer my questions in a group uh, interview. A couple years ago in Seattle, I asked a question after a game and I asked him about a teammate who did a good job. And he said, next question, which I thought was petty. Like Debo doesn't like me. Debo blocked me on Twitter. Debo answers my questions. Like, I can make Debo laugh. Debo will say hello to me in the locker room. And he blocked me on Twitter. Armstead's petty. So, finally, and this is crazy because I'm petty too, I gotta say. I felt it was a little over the, over the top. So, finally, the last time I ever saw him was in the locker room after the Super Bowl. Not, the lo- not, not a couple of days after the Super Bowl. You know, when they're, clear- when they're clearing out their locker. And you go up to one person one by one and you talk, you ask them about what they're going to be doing in the offseason or injuries, stuff like that. So I don't go to Eric Armstead to ask questions anymore. He doesn't want to answer my questions. Fair enough. But he's hurt. One, he got this meniscus injury. Two, two, he was one of the guys after the Super Bowl that mentioned that he didn't know the rules and that the coaches didn't tell him. So I like went over to listen to listen. I wasn't going to ask a question just to hear what he had to say. See if someone would follow up about what he said about the rules and all that. He saw me within a 10-foot radius. Like, he saw me approach. He really said, hold on, hold on, hold on. Because someone was asking me a question. He stopped the group interview. He looked at me and did this. He shooed me away like a rat. Okay, fair enough. I won't listen to your group interview. Fine. I don't care. Like, I don't need... First of all, as I said earlier, Eric Armstead group interviews are the most boring group interviews of all time. So he did me a favor. He saved eight minutes of my life that, I'll, that I would never have gotten back. But it's dehumanizing to do that to anyone. You know what I mean? It's like, it's the kind of thing you would do to... I don't know. Not a human being. And I was offended. I've never done that to someone. And I feel like, how rich would you have to be before you started shooing people with your hand? So, I remembered it, but I was like, okay, Armstead doesn't like me. It's not the first time he's disrespected me. But then when the Niners cut him, when the Niners cut him, and they before they cut him, they offered him a $6 million contract. I mean, am I wrong? But the Niners essentially gave him this one. Like, you did it to me, and then the Niners did it to you. So you ever heard that term schadenfreude? A little. I had a little. I, I hate, and I, I feel like it's unprofessional to say it, but just the way the Niners got rid of him was like, oh, wow. So now you know how it feels to get shooed away. That's what it feels like, Eric. And he said he felt extremely disrespected. I agree. Doesn't it feel extremely disrespectful when someone goes like this to you? Tells you to get the hell out of there? Who cares about the nine years that you gave to the organization and all you did in the community? Goodbye. No, but if you want to stay, here's $6 million. See, that to me, and everything worked out for Armstead, right? He got his deal with Jacksonville. He's good. But it's like, if you treat people like that, it's going to come back around. I think. 
I don't know that much about life. I've been on the world on the earth for 36 years. I think if you treat people like that, it's going to come back around. So all the best in Jacksonville. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. But wouldn't you feel that way if someone treats you like that? Like what? Because I said the Niners shouldn't extend your contract in 2020. Like I'm your mortal enemy. This is a guy who wanted to be the man of the year. I, just a flat out bully. A flat out petty bully. So that was my least favorite player I ever covered, man. Always had a chip on his shoulder. One time I was hanging out in Dallas before they played Dallas in the, in the playoffs. And I had to get my credential from their hotel. And it was like some four seasons outside of Dallas. It's an incredible place. So I was like, I'm not leaving here. I'm going to do my work here today and get a drink. Um, and I saw Eric Armstead hanging out in the same lobby with his parents. I mean, it's an incredible place. And I wanted to go over and be like, hey, Eric, man, it's really not, nice to see you. But I realized like, I don't think he would appreciate that. <laughs> Maybe one day. Maybe one day at like the Bay Area Sports Hall of Fame when someone's inducting him. Do you think he'll be in the Bay Area Sports Hall of Fame? I'm thinking he won't. But if he is, maybe we can reconcile. Is that the word? Reconcile? I don't think so. Because we weren't ever cool. Reconcile would imply you were cool at one point. We were never cool. Anyway. The Niners. That's why I was like, I'm sorry. I mean, also, I wonder why the Niners did that to him. It was so disrespectful. It was. I wonder if they had enough of him too. Amicable. Hall of Fame for what? Plantar fasciitis? So Grant, who's your favorite CC? And who's your least? Content creator? See, you got, there's like content creator wars going on right now. And the way I look at it is I feel like I'm in a unique position because, correct me if I'm wrong, I kind of feel like I birthed this. I don't mean to be too ego, egotistical here, but like I launched everyone. Even if I didn't do it directly. Everyone uses my format. So they're all my children. Everyone is my children, even the ones I don't work with anymore. It's hard to say who my favorite one is. They all do a good job. Larry is my son. He's about 25 years older than me, but Larry is my son. I'm his father. That's the way it is. I'm also Jose's father. Are all my content creator collaborators going to get mad at me and, and stop working me because I said I was their father? Hey, man, that's not cool. I have a dad. Nope, it's me. Sorry. They're all my kids. All my children. I can't choose between them. I just wish they would stop bickering. And stop asking me to break it up. What am I? I'm 36 years. I'm younger than everyone doing this. What do I need to do? I love Ryan. I love Jesse. I love Coach. I mean, these are guys I talk to on the phone all the time. Like, we have group text messages. I love these guys. Which is crazy. They're some of my best friends. And I've never met the coach in real life. I've met Ryan once. And Jesse stayed at my house for a week. <laughs> I am their dad. So when people try to ask me, hey, who is... No, I can't do that. They're all my children. I love them equally. What's your favorite story of your dad's in the locker room? Favorite story of my dad's. I mean, when I was there, there's an epic story that he's told about him and Randy Moss, but I was in college. I wasn't there. One time in Nashville, Tennessee, Niners were playing Titans. And after the game, I want to say, my dad went up to Anquan Bolden just to ask him some questions. And Anquan Bolden was really not helpful with the media. He would sort of talk under his, he was like, he just wouldn't talk very much. Like Jordan, no, you know, a mumbler. Fine. He's better than Michael Crabtree. Michael Crabtree didn't know what to say. Didn't want to talk to the, the media. And um, my dad was talking to Bolden. Bolden was being kind of not helpful. Crabtree came up and started making fun of my dad in some way. He, I don't think he knew who my dad was. Um, and my dad really got pissed off. I don't remember exactly what Crabtree said, but he didn't want it with my dad. My dad had one of these little recorders. You know, he puts it, he's like five, seven. He looks up at, at the, at the, <laughs> at the athletes right up in their face, but a little bit shorter than them with this recorder. 
And all of a sudden, Crabtree starts mouthing off. And my dad turns. And he puts it right in his face. You got something to say? You got something to say? Go ahead and say it. <laughs> and Crabtree's like, oh, oh. He just walks out. And my dad follows him out of the locker room. No, 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 no. no. I want to know what you think. I want to know what you think. Chases Crabtree out, comes back, and finishes the interview with Anquan. Okay, let's keep going. Anquan was like, okay, whatever you need, buddy. My dad's insane in a good way. And it's cool because, like, he's not insane. He's just a New Yorker. And I think to Californians or people who aren't from Brooklyn, they're just like, wow, that was very uh, direct and aggressive. What the fuck? But my dad kind of uses that to his advantage. He knows he's willing to go places that people aren't willing to go socially. Um, and Crabtree found out he was going to learn today. He didn't know, but he was going to learn today. That shit was too funny. Anquan Bolden learned the easy way. Crabtree learned the hard way. Who's my favorite comment creator? Definitely you. Brother Bob's good, although he's the biggest instigator in the, in the Niners content creator community. I can see Brother Bob just sitting at home listening to classical music, drinking red wine, and starting shit. You too, Matt. <laughs> Kruger just sent me two bottles of wine. Shout out to uh, Larry Kruger. That was very nice of him. I appreciate it. Uh, let me make sure I didn't miss any of these. Danny, thank you. Druish guy. Crank Cone Show, what a great idea. Yeah, that was, this is fish and chips. He emails me sometimes and I don't always respond. Sorry, but I get them and it was your idea. Thank you. And I know you sent me another one with more ideas about this. I will get to him. Druish guy. Greenlaw and BA are my two favorite players. They're two of my favorite players, too. I know why you feel that way. Sean McGee, what's your favorite story? Your dad's in the locker room. Got that. Vincent Campos. I haven't been watching the streams outside of yours. What CCs are beefing? Oh, I don't know. I don't even know. It's a good question. It's a better question for other people. I don't, I don't know. Um, thank you for bearing with me today. The beginning of the show was just a freaking disaster. I'm slipping, man. I'm cooked. All the things people say about me on Twitter are true getting passed up in this field, but thank you guys for rocking with me. It's been like four years of me doing this and uh, I want to say I'm retiring today. I'm done. Actually, I'm out of retirement. That was it. It was a brief retirement, but I'm coming back. So let everyone know Grant Cohn's out of retirement. He retired and now it's his comeback season. It's a whole new me. Jay-Z did it. Too Short did it. Why can't I retire and unretire just as a marketing stunt? It works. I just retired. Boom, I'm back. Let everyone know, Grant Cohn, unretired, back to running the streets, the YouTube streets, the toughest streets there are. I'm, I'm getting out of here, but before I do, Brother Bob wants to know, do you think we are legit Super Bowl contenders this year if we trade BA this offseason? I mean, can we, can we look at Brandon Ayuk's stats in the, super, in the playoffs real quick? Can we do that? Okay. Um... He had nine catches in the playoffs this year. Nine. It's three a game. Yeah, I think they can. Now, he's great, but they don't use him that much. Three catches a game? Like, what are they going to do without those three freaking catches a game? And one of the catches was like, saved their season, for sure. The one that bounced off the dude's face, incredible catch. But other than that, he didn't do much in the playoffs. So yeah, I think that'd be all right. Do we get to the play? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The team is loaded. I think they would. Maybe I'm wrong. But I'm, getting, I'm not saying like get rid of Ayuk and then don't replace the position. Draft a guy and sign Tyler Boyd. I think they'd be all right. I mean, they're running the ball anyway. Anyway. 